Hello everyone, once again, it's Brian here with a second installment of records I found in a sale bin. So before I say that, or before I get into that, I just wanted to mention that a couple of people did point out to me that they had found records in a Walmart store, in a physical store. Uh, Mark from Twanger's Turntable mentioned that to me, but he also indicated that they were pricey because he saw an Adele record for $65, which is insanity. But in Toronto, I've never seen a record in a Walmart, and you'd think that would be the place that they would sell them in a big city, but um, apparently not. So if I'm ever in another town, I will definitely check out the <laughs> Walmart stores to see if there's anything there, but I think the prices are going to be wacky. So five more records that I bought from this sale, and we'll start with this one from Devo. This I paid around seven or eight dollars for. It is called Summer with Devo, Live at the Palace 1988 Plus remix set. And the hype sticker says, Devo, Live at the Palace, Hollywood, California, December 9th, 1988. Now that actually was released on a live recording called Now It Can Be Told, Devo at the Palace. Um, so Somewhere uh, with Devo is and it includes Shout, Disco Dancer, and Somewhere. And then there's Freedom of Choice after that. Side 2 is from 2010. It's a DJ Kinky remix set of What We Do, Peekaboo, Cameo, and Step Up. And uh, was never released, though. So recorded in, or remixed in 2010, but never released. I think this is, uh, first of all, this is a um, Record Store Day issue from 2018. I think this is fantastic. I had never, I mean, I guess I'd heard Summer with Devo before. I don't have that recording, um, but the remixes are really good. I think this is <laughs> really fun. To, I, I like Devo, so uh, there's 2,500 copies of these. Terrible paper, paper sleeve and, yeah, an okay, an okay label, black vinyl. Um, I think this is really good. Um, and marked down significantly. So why, why was it only 7 or $8? I don't know. Somewhere around there. Number two, and this one comes in, I don't know if you care about the prices, but because they're from a sale, but I'm going to tell you, this was around $12. This is another Matt Mays record. There was a Matt Mays record yesterday and a Matt Mays record today. This is called Twice Upon a Hell of a Time, which is a companion to the previous release called Once Upon a Hell of a Time. I'll show you the, uh, this is the inside. I dropped the hype sticker, but essentially it says... Ah, Twice Upon a Hell of a Time is the acoustic companion to Once Upon a Hell of a Time. And I this is from 2018. I think it's his seventh or eighth record. Seventh record. So essentially, it is exactly what it says. It's acoustic versions of every song that appeared on the first record, Once Upon a Hell of a Time. There we have a updated photo of Matt. Some credits. And in this one, I again, we have these awful paper sleeves. With He's okay labels, but um, it's on colored vinyl, so both of the records in here, and I will probably change these sleeves, are on this. Is it red? It says it's red. I'm not sure red is the right, exactly right, but um, this is good, though. It's, um, I give this top marks. It's a good record. And if you like the Once Upon a Hell of a Time, you're going to like that one. There's no question about it. So here we have... <laughs> I will say right off, um, and this is the one that was like seven or eight dollars. Um, the thing that I would say is the least engaging thing that I bought, the least interesting thing I bought. It's called Endless Garbage. There's the back. Now this came out in 2021. Endless Garbage is improvisations by the five men listed here, and they are John Dwyer from the the OCs or the OCs and a band called Witch Egg. We got Ted. Burns, who is a free jazz drummer, and I did read something that um, John had been walking down a street and heard somebody drumming in their garage and found out who it was and talked to the guy, and they ended up getting together to make him a record. This record, Greg Coates, who is from Witch Egg, Tom Dolis from The OCs in Witch Egg, and then Brad Calkins from Witch Egg. I don't know much about Witch Egg. So this I, is in the free jazz, space jazz, free improv category, which is something that I should like because I do like avant-garde music I do like strange music I do like you know all things in that manner but it's really discordant and chaotic I will say I mean I'm not even sure you can call it jazz maybe you could call it jazz I just not quite sure um, if that's the adequate description um, so inside we have 
the record. There's a download card, and I, I can say I'm not going to be using the download card. <laughs> the download card. There's the information about the um, um, so um, there are song titles like Vertical Infinity, No Flutter, Goose. It goes on. Um, says it was where it was recorded. Who's doing what? Like what sort of instruments are using? We have stand-up bass, Wurlitzer, cla clavinet, saxophones, effects, tapes, organs, guitars, drums, etc. Reflect on that for a moment. Um, so uh, yeah, um, that one I probably shouldn't have bought, but. Based on the fact that John Dwyer's in it, I thought, well, how bad can it be? Like, it's got to be good. He's from the OCs. Um, and I did read someone saying that if you don't like it, don't worry. There'll be a new OCs record anytime soon. Because aren't there like 25 or so now? <laughs> so, all right. So this is a record from someone called Marcus, with a K, Floats. His real name is Marcus Lake. Originally from Calgary. He relocated to Montreal and is now on the Constellation record label, which is a label I really love. So part of the Montreal scene now. This cost me, after the discount, five bucks. Anything from Constellation I'm kind of interested in. This is an ambient, um, experimental record. Uh, he's also an artist, so he did the cover for this. His albums have very interesting titles. <laughs> First album, second album, third album, and fourth album. This is the third album. And uh, it includes a download card, which I just dropped, and a piece of artwork, which I'm not sure I love that. It's okay. And polyline sleeve, which is great, black vinyl. And I think this is fantastic. I've listened to this. I think it's a really great record. If you like, this is from 2020, by the way, if you like that sort of ambient experimental sound you may like it so here is the package with the hype sticker in if one thing one thing constellation does really well is describing their music you know it's like when you pick up a book and you read the blurb on the jacket you know afterwards you does it really fit and um this one i would say is maybe a little overwritten but i'm going to read it to you because i find it kind of fascinating so it says a sublime idiosyncratic left field electronic work of oral abstract expressionism Melodic gestures, sequence pulses, atonal clusters, granulated noise textures, and shifting harmonic drones are arranged in shapes and strokes of timbral tension, hue, and depth. The constellation debut for this consummate Montreal based electro acoustic composer and abstract painter. So that's uh, interesting. If, listening to that, I guess I see where they're coming from. Of course, I would never have written it like that, but <laughs> what can you do? Anyway, I recommend that one. I think it's really good. And then. I would say this is the best thing I picked up from the uh, sale bins. And it's going to be difficult for me to describe this because um, it's kind of wacky. So here's the album jacket. Really interesting artwork is from, again, I'm going to pronounce this badly, Kaiji Haino and Sumac. So the Japanese gentleman is a, I guess, sort of well-known um, Japanese musician um, and singer songwriter he's worked with many many bands i think the last time i checked he had something like or not the last time i checked when i checked he had something like 85 to 90 releases that were part of bands or collaborations or solo works he's kind of worked in rock free impro free improvisation noise um percussion psychedelic music minimalism drone etc like that and he, he's etc like that <laughs> what am i saying uh since the 1970s he's always looked the same he has the same haircut he doesn't smoke doesn't drink he's vegetarian doesn't do drugs he looks pretty much the same all the time except he's older now i guess this is the back of this uh cover it's called into this juvenile apocalypse our golden blood to pour let us never written in japanese and english now sumac is an american post-metal sludge metal band i guess that's the description of them um so um, someone referred to them as punishing sludge metal from the Pacific North Northwest. So I didn't really know anything about Sumac. And this on the surface seems like a really bizarre combination where you have this weird avant-garde Japanese musician with this sludge metal. But they've had three records that they've done together. This is the third from, uh, what is the date here? 20, 2002, I think. And this is on the Thrill Jockey label, which I find is another one of my favorite uh, labels so um this is also an interesting case like this is a slip case 
that slips on and off. It has the name of the album on all four sides, either in Japanese or in English. It comes in the slipcase. Let me read the titles of the songs as they're made. They're kind of interesting. So we have When Logic Rises, Morality Fails. Logic and morality in Japanese are but one character different. I'll take that as granted for granted. A shredded coiled cable within this cable sincerely could not be contained. Third track, Into This Juvenile Apocalypse, Our Golden Blood to Pour, Let Us Never, title track. Because the evidence of a fact is valued over the fact, over the fact itself, truth becomes fractured. The, that fuzz pedal you planted in your throat, its screw has started to come loose. Your next effects pedal is up to you. Do you have it ready? That regularity of yours, can you throw it further than me? And I don't mean discarding it. So really interesting. Apparently they recorded this live, I guess in a studio, without any discussion, without any rehearsal, just started going. And it's, they're very long tracks. They uh, have a lot of crescendo, a lot of, um, uh, I don't know, tension, maybe a bit of chaos. So the slipcase comes off. And then we have the image, the artwork again, and there's a better photo of the, the trio that is Sumac and the Japanese musician there with the long hair and sunglasses, which apparently are a feature, and two pieces of vinyl, black vinyl, like this. Um, I just think that, sorry, I said 2002, 2022, I don't know why I said 2002, but this, I think, is a triumph. I love this. I don't know how to compare it to anything else. It has sort of a post-rock feel to me. And um, it just seems to work really well. It's a weird combination. I, when I first read the description, I thought, oh, it's going to be like Lou Reed and Metallica. But no, it's not quite like that. <laughs> because it's not full-on metal the whole time through. It's hard to describe. But I would suggest streaming from if you're interested in this. I think it's really, really interesting. And another download code, which is kind of cool. So uh, that's it for this one. Five more. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next one.